We have seen a rapid adoption of AI across industry and government service delivery. The impact of AI is clear on all our day-to-day -day lives and governments globally are looking at such developments and appropriate regulatory balances between development, adoption, and the impact AI has on citizens. With the Philippines launching its national AI roadmap in 2022, and with President Marcos's declared focus on technology and digital transformation as priorities for his administration, the Philippines is in a prime position to achieve its ambition to be the digital services hub in the ASEAN region. Today's discussion will revolve around two things. First, the Philippine government's plans in leveraging AI and other technology to promote the Philippines as a digital services hub. And secondly, how governments and private sector can work together to achieve these goals. But we first hear from uh, Under Secretary uh, Aldaba to discuss the Philippines National AI Roadmap and the Philippines government plans in leveraging AI. So let me turn over to the Under Secretary, please. First of all, allow me to thank you, Stephen and Princess, for inviting me to the IBM Policy Lab. Our topic on uh, leveraging AI for inclusive economic growth is very timely and important, especially given the chat GPT craze. Well, we started the roadmap in 2019 and continued the work even at the height of the pandemic. We launched it in May 2021. So why AI? In 2017, 2018, we were already discussing the impact of the fourth industrial revolution on uh, Philippine industries. And among the emerging Industry 4.0 technologies, we prioritized AI given its potential to bring about positive change if developed correctly. Based on the calculations by Kearney and uh, EDBI for the Philippines, AI has the potential to add 92 billion US dollars to our economy by 2030. So AI represents a big window of opportunity for the country to leverage on um, our existing comparative advantage, especially in the IT business process management sector and expand to key international AI markets in the future. And one of the major recommendations of the roadmap is the building of a national center for AI research. And this is crucial in order to accelerate innovation and digitalization, especially among our um, SMEs. The AI Center is going to be a public-private partnership and would serve as hub for data scientists and researchers to perform collaborative AI, R&D, and technology applications it's also going to offer consultancy services and create AI tech products to support the digital transformation of uh, industries. It's also going to conduct uh, data literacy programs and develop learning modules to upskill and reskill the workforce. And lastly, of course, we want to um, make use of this as our platform in order for us to attract leading global firms to set up their R&D activities in the country. One of the dimensions of the Philippines National AI Roadmap uh, involves regulation with the imperative of developing an AI economy conscience. Um, can you perhaps elaborate on this and explain what this means and also perhaps touch on um, the kinds of and the breadth of regulations you think are needed to help in developing um, the AI economy in the Philippines? Based on the roadmap, um, one of the major barriers to AI adoption is um, the lack of a clear ethical, legal, and regulatory framework in, here in the country on AI. So um, it is necessary for us to establish a clear um, AI ethics and uh, governance framework to promote AI innovation and uh, build trust on AI adoption. And by conscience, of course, we refer to our moral sense of uh, right and wrong, that inner voice that guides a person's ethical and uh, moral decisions. An AI um, economy ca conscience can be interpreted as the ethical considerations and the uh, principles 
that guide the development, deployment, and use of uh, AI technologies within um, the economic context. And this, this may include issues like um, data privacy, algorithmic bias, job displacement, and um, societal impact. It involves balancing the economic benefits of AI with uh, the potential social and ethical concerns that arise from its uh, implementation. And in the Philippines, we are in the process of uh, developing our governance framework for AI. And let me emphasize that uh, the framework is not intended to over-regulate AI activities that may hinder AI adoption, especially at this infancy stage of AI development in the Philippines. Governance frameworks are uh, much broader than regulations, and frameworks are um, informed by shared principles and values. They enable organizations to integrate a range of plans, policy choices, approaches, and strategies into a coherent uh, guiding document. And um, through the AI governance framework, we want to establish agreeable scope and limitations of what um, developers and stakeholders can do and um, AI's intended function, keeping in mind the economic, political, and social cultural impact to society and uh, covering um, guiding principles on um, responsible AI, such as data privacy, accountability, safety and security, professional responsibility, transparency and explainability, fairness and non-discrimination, inclusiveness and uh, promotion of human values. A clear, consistent, and responsive governance framework on AI technology will give us the opportunity to create a nurturing environment for AI innovation while ensuring that these innovations will ultimately benefit our people. And um, I, I would also want to cite certain regulations that can be uh, beneficial, like for instance, in data privacy and security, of course, AI relies heavily on data and regulations that ensure the privacy and security of data can foster trust in um, AI systems. In, um, AI systems. And this would include regulations on data collection, storage, and uh, sharing. And uh, another would be on the ethical use of AI. Regulations can be put in place to ensure that um, AI systems are developed and used in an ethical manner and that they do not discriminate against uh, individuals or groups. And this may include regulations around transparency, accountability, and fairness. Another important uh, aspect would be on intellectual property. AI technologies often involve complex algorithms and proprietary data and regulations around uh, intellectual property can help protect the interests of AI developers and uh, users. If I could um, ask you another question, uh, and, and really the Philippines is not a, alone in this area, which is around skills for AI development. Um, so another dimension of the roadmap is, is obviously workforce development. So leveraging AI and other emerging technologies will need the corresponding digital skills. Um, how does the government plan to address uh, the current skills gap? And again, I think we, we see this skills gap being you know, uh, in, in many, many countries. So I, I think the, the government that could come up with the, the right roadmap and the secret source will certainly uh, jump ahead in this space. Very keen to get an understanding from the Philippines government's perspective. I think that's really um, a relevant issue that uh, most of us are uh, really trying to uh, address. Um, well, in the Philippines, we are actually uh, adopting a multifaceted approach involving, uh, number one, education and training programs that would provide Filipinos with uh, the necessary skills to work with AI and other emerging technologies through universities, vocational schools, and other um, educational institutions. 
And um, also very important would be industry academia partnerships. So uh, government is uh, partnering with industry and the academe in, in terms of uh, providing training programs that are specially designed uh, to meet the needs of uh, the industry. And this would also include uh, discussions around internships, apprenticeships, and other forms of uh, work-based uh, learning. Um, and then the third would be on reskilling and upskilling uh, programs um, for individuals who are currently working in industries that are being disrupted by AI and other uh, emerging technologies. These programs can help you know, individuals acquire the necessary skills to transition to new roles or uh, industries. And um, I would also want to highlight the role of uh, tax incentives, which uh, we are also uh, implementing here in the country, um, to companies that uh, invest in training their employees in AI and other uh, emerging technologies. And this can encourage companies to prioritize the development of digital skills within their workforce. The Philippines is one of the, the largest global IT service delivery centers in the world. And, and I think it's been mentioned, you have a very young, dynamic, creative um, population that, that can flourish in this space. Um, so with careful and balanced policy settings, I think the Philippines is well positioned to build on this capability to carve out a global leadership position in, in AI. Briefly, at IBM, we have a 10-point AI policy plan in order to advance trusted AI. And I thought it was worth not going through all 10, but, but we, we did raise the issue and, and, and the concept of trust. So one of our primary policy bedrocks is support and advance global consensus-based industry-led standards for AI explainability, fairness, accountability, and security to provide incentives to companies that apply them and conform accordingly. And I know, Under Secretary, you mentioned um, the importance within your strategy of explainability, fairness, and accountability. So I think we're very much aligned on that point. Thanks very much. I hope you've enjoyed the session, and we look forward to, to bringing you further opportunities to explore this topic as we go down the path of AI policy. Thanks, everyone.